Hi guys and welcome to Whiskey Geek. I'm Ben and today I'm going to be reviewing the Cardew Gold Reserve. Now this might seem like a bit of an odd choice, but I really like the bottle and since I'm so close to finishing, I want to empty it out so that I can start on an infinity bottle. Cardew is a distillery in the Speyside region and the name is derived from the Gaelic for black rock which harkens back to the uh, geography where the distillery was planted. It was originally um, an illicit farmyard distillery set up by John Cumming, who used to be a whiskey smuggler, and his wife Helen. They used to make great use of this vantage point, and whenever they saw law enforcement around, they'd mast a big flag to warn other illicit distilleries, and then they'd throw flour around and pretend that they were baking bread to mask the smell and the customers. After whiskey production was legalized, they rebuilt the distillery and tripled their output. This led to a business partnership with Johnny Walker with huge portions of their whiskey going over to be made into blends. Um, and over the years this developed into Johnny Walker buying the distillery, although it was still run by the Cummings family, um, and it's now owned by Diageo, with a large portion of the single malt still ending up in Johnny Walker blends. So this bottle was actually given to me by my brother as a bit of a housewarming gift. It's a no age statement and it's bottled at 40%. No mention of chill filtration, no mention of colouring. So it's bottled for the masses really. It is an entry level price point whiskey. And you can pick it up for about 25 pound fairly regularly in UK supermarkets. So for anyone who's familiar with the Cardew's pure malt controversy, it's interesting to take a look at the marketing blurb and see that none of it really means anything. Cask selection, hand-picked toasted oak. The only bits that matter are single malt scotch, 40%. I already feel like I'm being a little bit jaded and that's not really my intention. I just wish that a distillery who is this well placed would give us some presentation with some meaning, some actual information, rather than just buzzwords and fluff. But anyway, let's get on with the whiskey and let it speak for itself. I'm putting that colour down a shade 08, Sauternes. Let's try the nose. Honey and cinnamon and a bit of dry grass. Some warming spices in there, baked spices. It's opening up to a lot of orchard fruits as well. It's really quite a full smell, full aromas. That haze kind of developing into a resinous tone, a little bit bitter. As it's mellowed out, it's kind of a floral honey, cinnamon and ginger, and quite a sharp green baking apple. Not massively complicated, but very pleasant, very accessible. Now to try it on the palate. Caramel and honey and a little bit of citrus, and then it mellows gently. A cinnamon spice and then a bit of alcohol prickle begins to develop. It's warming and those apples start to build. It tastes quite young and fresh, you know, there's not much complexity at all. But again, it's very accessible, very friendly. And it's got a good body for a 40% whiskey as well. The finish has quite a um, bitter prickle. The apple's still lingering through. Then some of those spices come back, ginger. It's kind of a, a dull sweetness hidden behind kind of flat woody tones. It's certainly pleasant, but it's that kind of, that bitterness that follows through. So I'm giving this one a rating of 64 out of 100. It's a good price point whiskey. You know, it's nothing complex, but it's very accessible. It could be a good introduction to scotch or form a good uh, daily dram. Something you just want to sip casually, um, enjoy socially, that kind of thing. I might have to rethink using this as my infinity bottle though. It looks like the cork's deteriorating and there's bits of it floating in the whiskey. Now you know why a distillery's put out a whiskey like this. It's their cash cow. It's the whiskey that will sell on volume and keep them afloat. But I can't help but feel that maybe it's actually doing them some harm. You know, based on this, I'm in no particular rush to go out and grab one of their age statements, one of the more expensive whiskies, because this hasn't really grabbed me. It hasn't really uh, drawn me in. But then consumers like us are in the minority, and so this probably makes them way more money. So thanks for watching guys and joining me on another little whiskey review. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, chuck a thumbs up below and a comment and consider subscribing for more reviews and general whiskey goodness. Cheers.